Hi, everyone. Good evening to most of you watching. I guess good afternoon maybe to a couple of you. And if you are catching this across the Pacific, good morning. How's everybody doing? Hope we're having a good day. Ready to answer some questions. Going to try to stay desalinated. Um, it's interesting. Last night was obviously the private live stream for the members of Observer Review. Um, your next uh, issue of the e-magazine comes out in about two weeks, by the way. Observer Review link down there below uh, the video in the description box. I say we start this off correctly in the chat. Let's see who knows what that means without me having to say it. Look at that. Boom. Yep. Well, for those who uh, don't know how we start off the chat, it is Denver sucks, which it does tremendously. So how uh, how are we feeling? What do we want to talk about this evening, huh? Mm. What do we got? Boy, that one is bright. I'm turning one of those off, actually. Give me five seconds. Whew. Oh, that's much better. That's much better. So, all right. Last night's private live stream was awesome. I think every single question got answered. There was some inter-chatter, like stuff that wasn't directed at me. And once I could tell, I kind of tried to ignore that because people were asking quite a bit of questions. It was, you know, it was slightly challenging to keep up, but I do think we got every single question answered last night. That was cool. Where is the whiteboard? The whiteboard is over there. It's not, uh, not in play this evening. Okay, so let's see here. Oh, there was a question that came in from Lisa um, asking about there being a benefit to going up to like 9,000 feet in the mountains as opposed to where I am, which is about one mile up from sea level. Um, there, are, there are benefits and there are drawbacks. I'm going to start by saying there is not one right answer to surviving the disaster. Definitely not. What's up, bud? Thanks for the teal pair. Adam Watts, thank you for the teal pair. And Grand Grand, I'm pretty sure I saw you throw one up there earlier as well. Thanks to everybody, by the way. But back to Lisa's question. Um, 9,000 feet can work. I can tell you that uh, you're much safer from like marauders and people trying to attack your compound and steal your stuff. Um, you probably will have... Uh, a much better chance of controlling your local area uh, in a way that is beneficial to you. In this part of the world, and in most parts of the world where you can get to 9,000 feet, uh, the cold in winter time is going to be a bigger issue. Um, some of the animals that you can farm at lower elevations can't hack it at the higher ones. I'm not saying there's no animals to farm. I'm just saying your selective, you know, your selective criteria is going to go down a little bit. Um, there's there's not just one right answer. I picked where I picked because I thought it was a nice balance of everything. Anyway, all right. Oak Hill Classroom. Russian earthquake cluster looks like an underwater volcano. Uh, the cluster is basically aftershocks that are going the entire length of the fault rip. It was a huge one. An enormous, enormous rip of that fault. Uh, and everywhere it did rip, we are seeing tons of aftershocks, as we, you know, probably should expect. Um, I saw your question earlier. The earthquake triggered the volcano uh, that did go off in Russia, not the other way around. Um, don't You can go look back to any earthquake ever that was, you know, magnitude 8 and higher. There's a phenomenal number of aftershocks. Phenomenal. Hi, Susie. Say hi to Leah for me. What color is Leah's hair now? Uh, 
Uh, best comment from last night, finding community is crucial. Yeah, it really is. Um, most people who spend any amount of time thinking about prepping and surviving the disaster spend ample amounts of time considering physical needs, goods that you're supposed to be stocking. Those who watch me do a pretty good job thinking about, okay, well, what about my body? What about my mind? What about books and knowledge that I want to preserve? Um, very little attention and time is paid to creating your network, to creating your community. Some of you haven't even begun to go down that route. And that's, that's an enormous bottleneck in who's going to survive and who's not. I promise. Strength in numbers. And I'm not going to go through all the ways that is the case here, but just use your imagination. You get attacked. Strength in numbers. You get sick. Strength in numbers. You twist your ankle and you're out for a week. Strength in numbers. Take it from there. Community and your immediate network, your new family in the next stage of Earth, is the reason you're going to soon to agree with that anymore. It's hard to know. Hard to know. I've never done any study on earthquakes of that smaller magnitude. Although the fact that that's such an unusual area could lend itself to say, magnitude be damned, look at the event itself pragmatically as a singular one-off event. And from that perspective, the answer would be maybe. But here's the thing. There was a massive coronal hole facing Earth during the Japan 